Hey guys, welcome back to the little second part of this or second part of, of this short video, but we're part of a multi-series of videos here. Top trading tips we're talking about. Right this very second, I am talking about separating your work and home life. Now this is such a big topic, I've split it up into a few videos. Um, but this is perfect. If you're trading from home, then you want to watch this video. Go and check out the video before as well. I'm going to talk a lot about uh, trading from home and how to get a separation. And if you like this kind of stuff, hit the like button at any point in the video. I'd appreciate the like, uh, and it would really help us guide into what sort of topics we want to do more of and what we don't want to do more of. You know, So if you like it, go ahead and smash that like button. So the other thing I talked about earlier was finding a way of separating at home and work. We had some ideas on that. The next one I want to talk about is having no dear disturbances let me make sure i spell that right because i'm kind of looking uh at the ipad at the same time no disturbances when trading right what i mean by that i basically means that's a, a t by the way uh i basically mean listen when you're trading you don't want to be disturbed and that means nobody coming around on the door nobody calling you it's not related to business or trading Nobody coming up to you and bothering you. Nobody asking you for anything. Those have got to be the rules. And you've got to be strict with this, guys, because if you're trading from home and your partner happens to be at home as well or kids are at home when you're trading the clothes or whatever it may be, um, you need to say, listen, when daddy or mummy or, or, or husband or wife is is there and I'm at my seat and I've, if, I've, if you've got a note system that says, listen, when there's a little red note on the desk or whenever the you know whatever you can have some kind of system that says when that's happening or when i'm even when i'm at that chair do not bother me at all now it may sound like it's harsh and stuff and that's one of the advantages of trading from from home and stuff is that you can be there but the point is you need to have that separation so that you can even if you're just literally analyzing stuff for swing trading perspective if you're not day trading you're just analyzing for swing trading perspective you need that clarity you need those hours that you can just focus purely on what you're doing so being strict and saying listen i don't want any disturbances and these are the rules and it's the same with callers you know don't take personal calls during the day or have a lunchtime window, whatever we can. Anyone comes up and just fancies a chat or whatever, then you know you, you've got to take this 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 kind of seriously. Now you can obviously can become flexible in that as you improve as a trader or, or as you start start to develop a little bit of flow. But for me, these are kind of tips that if you're you know just getting some traction with your trading, it helps to have this this kind of grip. So no disturbances. Um, when you're trading. And that comes back that down to another thing. I'm not going to bother. Oh, in fact, I will write it. It's kind of a sub thing. Is no other websites. What I mean by that, pretty obvious, guys. When you are at your desk trading, you are trading. Don't get distracted by a news site unless it's part of your analysis. Don't get distracted by uh, social media unless you're obviously using it as part of your analysis, perhaps you're analyzing Twitter sentiment, whatever, that's fine. But don't get distracted and caught out by, you know, Facebook or all, all those other kind of things, things that just suck you in, the clickbait, any other websites, browsing technology, browsing Amazon, eBay, any other forums, any of that kind of stuff that you do for entertainment, don't do it during the trading hours. Have it set down in stone and say, listen, between these hours, I'm not going to do it. Maybe you allocate yourself lunch, which is fine. We talked about giving yourself the time and the space to refresh from trading. And by all means, you can say to yourself, listen, I go out and get a sandwich or whatever. I come back, I eat it. I can then browse news or, you know, car sites or hobby sites, whatever, you know, you would do if you were casually browsing. But when that time comes that that lunch time is finished or that period is finished, bang, goes off and you don't ever look at the browser or any of those sites again. Because these things will just suck the, 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 um, your attention away when you need it the most. And if you allocate the time to specifically to trading, then stick to it. I think that's the best way um, you know, of doing it. What have I got here? Uh, similar thing, in fact, very, very similar. When you're on a break, you are on a break, no trading. So when you say to yourself, hey, listen, I'm on my lunch break or I'm on an afternoon break or I trade the DAX open in the US open or whatever it may be. Maybe this is a bit more aimed to day traders, um, but even if you're even if you're watching the market all day and you're swing trading, then when you say I'm on a break, then continue and follow through with that 
and stay on the break. Don't suddenly come back to trading because what will happen is, and believe me, I've done this kind of thing before, is that you say you're on a break, you come back, you say, oh, just have a look at the market. Something catches your eye, you take a trade, and it's just something that you hadn't even planned. It's not even right. And you think, well, actually, the reason I planned my break in this period was because the market movement isn't really conducive to my styles. That's why I've said to myself, you know, my two hour lunch or whatever it may be, because I'm trading aggressively in the open here, the open here, the close here from a day trading perspective, of course. So when you're on a break, be on a break and only come back when you say you're going to come back. Unless you've got some kind of extra caveat in there that says, hey, if an alert goes off that something's kicked off, then I can break the break break, that makes sense, come back in and then trade. So the final thing I've got here is that, uh, ah, this is a good one actually guys, this is a good one. So have a routine when you return. Now, what do I mean by that? Ah, this is a really, really good one. Um, and it may not seem good, it might, you might be thinking, well, what's this all about, but honestly, when you come back after your break or after the other day or whatever it is, have a same routine you run through. What do I mean by that? In other words, you sit down and you say, I'm let me do it from my perspective, from a day trader's perspective. Uh, if you're swing trading, this will be different, but I still think you should have this kind of routine. And I use the analogy of flying and stuff a, a lot, but it's still the same kind of thing as the pre-flight checklist. So coming back, your routine, when you return, you come back, You'd say, right, let me check the daily chart again. Let me check the 15 minute chart, the five minute chart. Let me check the news. Let me check the levels. Let me check what's happened while I've been gone. Is there anything that I need to know that I've missed while I've gone? What have I done so far in the morning? What are my key levels for the day? What is my, what are my notes saying about the style of the market conditions? What do I got to look out for? What is there coming up later in the day that I need to watch out for? What have I got to look out for personally? Am I a little bit eager to jump into trades at the moment or am I this, am I that? Just running through that sequence and then saying, right, I've analyzed it, I know where I am personally, I know where the market is, all the stocks, or whatever it is you're trading, fine, don't. Now I can begin to trade or begin to analyze or begin to, to do whatever. And I think that process of taking it so seriously enough that you don't kind of step into that environment of decision making until you have all the data and then you kind of go into the point of, okay, now I'm looking for a trade or now I'm looking for an idea or looking for or a level to be alerted to, whatever it may be, but having that routine so you're not kind of rushing back from wherever you are, slamming yourself in the seat, glancing around and taking a trade, whether that is swing or day, you know, your desire to trade, you've got to kind of dampen that a bit and say, okay, listen, let me regulate things. Same if you're doing a swing trade analysis session, coming in, looking for a position trade, let me just do my analysis, da, 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 run through the list, make sure everything's done. Right, now I can go to the actual process of looking for the trade idea. So, that's what I've got for you in this one, guys. Uh, if you like that, again, give me a like so we can do more of this and we'll kind of find the videos that work and those that don't and we'll, we'll kind of try and guide um, with what you like. So your your um, opinion does, does help that. Next thing, next video, I'm going to talk about traders' lifestyle. Uh, hey, yeah, this is interesting. This is kind of how you involve your significant other with trading. Uh, this is about growing your trading size, analyzing trades, support, that kind of thing. So check it out. Next video is coming up. Have a look at the next one and uh, see you soon.